Ooh. Now we're good to go. Are we? Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to tonight's broadcast between the San Francisco Dogfish and the hometown Portland Stags. MLU regular season. And hot off a home win against Western Conference contender Seattle, San Francisco has absolutely nothing to lose this weekend in Portland. They've already shown with the win in Vancouver, that they do travel well and that they can win without superstars Bo Kittredge, Mac Taylor, and Ashlyn Joy, who will not be here this evening. Look for them to play a loose and deep into the bench this game in preparation for their upcoming games against Vancouver and Seattle later in the season. Portland Stags have had a tough go of it in their first three games. They're yet to win. However, this is the second time that they will get an opportunity to play against San Francisco. Got the mascots out there. Portland is running out of chances to put something together here in 2013. They could steal a game, however and some confidence at home against San Francisco if they can take advantage of the Dogfish's huck-happy offense. In talking with the head coach of the Portland Stags, Dusty Becker, he's felt like Portland is yet to lose, is yet to have a team beat them. They have had, they have just lost the games themselves. And so Becker was, really going to preach to his team tonight to play within themselves and focus on their team and not worry about so much of what San Francisco is doing. And talking to San Francisco's coach, Justin Safety, Safety, excuse me, he was focused on players players for the Stags, Khalif Salam and Breeze Strout. Said Strout will be hucking the disc deep a lot, taking a lot of those deep shots. And Salam is a freshman at the University of Washington up in Seattle. This is only his second time with the team. Teams are getting set to play. I'd like to take a quick moment to uh, thank our sponsors, Elemental Technology. It's one of the main reasons we're able to bring this game to you live is the services that they provide. Also, Five Ultimate, the official apparel provider for the MLU. They are true lovers of the game and have built their company with the vision for growing the sport and outfitting those who play it. You can visit them at 5ultimate.com or follow them on twitter.com backslash 5ultimate. Also, there's Chris Hanky Hancock. He is the owner of Friction Gloves, the official glove provider 
for the MLU. These all-weather gloves are specifically dined, designed for ultimate players combining the tackiness of receiver gloves along with the rubberized grip for better catches and throws. Look for Friction Gloves Catch of the Week throughout the season and get an official MLU pair for yourself soon from the MLU shop. Visit FrictionGloves.com to learn more. We're just about set to uh, get things going. I'd like to thank Innova real quick. The official disc of the MLU is the Innova Pulsar, designed in cooperation with players and staff of the MLU. The new Pulsar is the perfect disc for the pro game. Get your Pulsar today at shop.mlu.com or visit Innova Discs for a look at the results of their product line, including world-class disc golf gear. One of the keys of the game for PDX will be to be patient and to convert when they are given their opportunities. They do have MLU's leading goal scorer, Timmy Purston. He is the leading goal scorer. However, they do have a low conversion rate as they often huck the disc deep to him while he's covered, covered by two or three defenders. going to get you the rosters here for today's game on San Francisco Dogfish. Number nine, Cassidy Rasmussen. He is not suited up tonight. He is injured. Uh, number 10, James Pollard. Number 20, Nick Schlag. Ashlyn Joy, of course, is not here. And number 80, Kevin Smith. Also out there. Number five, Devon Anderson. 13, Tyler Grant. 18, Eric Greenwood. 23, Jordan Jeffrey. 35, Lucas Dahlman. Handlers on defense will be number 16, David Abrams. Number 19, Yo Kawaoka. Number 25, Will Chen. Number 34, Evan Boucher. Number 0, Adam Ferren. 6, Drew Kim. Number 7, Russ Wynn. 8, Patrick Bayless. 11, Zach Travis. 12, Sam Canner. Although I didn't see Canner down there, I don't believe he's here. The players, Bo Kittredge, Ashlyn Joy, Mac Taylor, Martin Cochran, not with us tonight because they are trying out for the World Games team. The hometown Portland Stags, handlers on offense. This evening will be number 9, Chris Hancock, 10, Bree Strout, 23, Michael Knapp, 24, Jeremy Norton, 73, Adrian King. Cutters on offense. Number 6, Cody Bjorklund. Number 7, Eli Friedman. 11, Kyle Johnson. 31, Jeremy Meyer. 44, Steve Gusson. 88, Sean Parker. Handlers on defense. Nevin Root. Number 15, John Thornton. Number 21, Ben McGinn. 22, Grant Cole. 42, Ben Lorry. Cutters on defense. Number 3, Khalif El Salam. Number 8, Eli Blackman. Number 12, Riley Minershagen. 13, Timmy Purston. 17, Rafi Hayes. 19, Chris Be Beach Reader. Number 20, Dan Shaw. And number 54, Michael Deloy. couple of the key players to focus on. First player there on the right is Khalif El Salam. Third down the line is Cody Bjorklund. Big player for Oregon. Also a big player out of Oregon. Callahan Award winner Eli Friedman. There's Breeze Strout.
Eli Friedman plays club with Portland's Rhino, as do many of these other players. There's the head coach, Dusty Becker. Please join us, fans, for tonight's presentation of the National Anthem. All right, fans, we're going to go down to Jenica Villamore for a interview with the head coach of the Portland Stags, Dusty Becker. Just before game time with me, here is head Stags coach Justin Becker. We're here right on your home turf. How does it feel go right before going into the game? It feels great. Our team is ready to go. We're really confident, and we're excited to play the Dogfish again because they're a great team. But so you, guys, are we. you guys played them in the first game this season, and they came out with a win by a few points. Is there anything you're doing different this game? The difference is just in the focus. It's just in our determination, our ability to take care of the disc, but also shut them down on defense. It's pretty simple. And also, they're missing a few key players. Do you plan on taking advantage of that at all? Yeah, we kind of have to. Their big guys are gone, so we kind of need to be a little more aggressive with the disc in the air, but also be a little more confident guarding them underneath and making them throw the disc up, make them prove it. And lastly, what's it going to take to win this game? We just have to take care of the disc. Plain and simple. You don't turn the disc over, you win the game. Great. Thanks so much. Good luck. Thank you, Jenica. Meanwhile, I spoke with the Dogfish head coach, and he told me although he is missing a few key players, he's not worried. He has a very deep team who can easily step up into those roles, and he feels very confident going into this game. I'll catch up with him in a little bit. Until then, back to you. Thank you, Jenica, for that lovely interview. Portland Stags will be starting out on offense tonight. Starting line for Portland Stags, number 10, Bree Stroud, number 9, Chris Hancock, 31, Jeremy Meyer, number 7, Eli Friedman, 13, Timmy Purston, number 6, Cody Bjorklin, number 4, Steve Gusson. D1 
defensive line for the San Francisco Dogfish. Number 16, David Abram. Number 19, Yo Kawaoka. Number 35, uh, Lucas Dahlman. Number 11, Zach Travis. Number 13, Tyler Grant. And number four, Andrew Hagen. Lucas Dahlman with the disc. Talking to the coach before the game. Looking for him to fill Martin Cochran's shoes. And we're underway. Lucas Dahlman with the outside in pull. Eli Friedman brings it down. Stall counts only to seven. Bree Strout swings across to Chris Hancock. Under to Timmy Purston. Bjorklund streaks deep. Purston looks him off. Dumps to Gusson. There's Yo with the bid. Unable to get the D. Friedman up the line to Purston. Purston dumps to Strout. Purston streaking deep. Now to Gusson. Now Bree Strout with it, marked by Zach Travis. Bree Strout looking for Purston right away. Purston goes up and gets the disc over Lucas Dahlman. Timmy Purston with his league leading 15th goal of this young 2013 MLU regular season. That's his first goal of the game. Gonna get another look at it. This large MLU field. Allows space for Purston to run down onto the disc. Stags were able to create a lot of space with their swings, opening up the field. A near D by Captain Yo Kawaoka. But the Callahan Award winner, Eli Friedman, able to maintain possession. And the Stags get the first point of the game. Pull here from number 42, Ben Lorry. A low bullet. Doesn't allow his team much time to get down there on defense. That's 25, Will Chen. He played at Harvard. Schlag from Stanford moves it up to Jordan Jeffries. A wide open streaking. That's number six, Drew Kim with it marked by Lorry. Now Dan Shaw on the mark. Eric Greenwood scores for the San Francisco Dogfish. A little bit of confusion there from the Stags. Unable to pick up uh, Drew Kim. He streaks deep. No one guarded him. Jordan Jeffries throws a throw out to space. Allows Kim to run down onto it. And the Dogfish are able to tie the game at ones. Offensive line for the Portland Stags. Gussin, Strout, Bjorklin, Friedman, Hancock, Purston, and Meyer. D-line for the Dogfish. Dalman, Abram, Grant, Kawaoka, Hagen, Travis, and Anderson. Outside in, Blady pull there from Dalman. Friedman takes it down, back to Strout. Those two played together in high school at South Eugene, been playing together for years. Friedman puts it out to Strout. Portland really spreading the field here. Hancock with it on the sidelines. Purston. Bid from Zach Travis. And Strout puts up an inside-out flick to Friedman. And Devin Anderson able to go through and get that D. I don't think Friedman knew that Anderson was on his back. Usually you see Friedman attack the disc. That time he was trying to run it down. Kawaoka with it now. 
Swings around to Tyler Grant, marked by Meyer. Grant flicks up to Hagen, marked by Strout. Hagen dumps to Abram. Disco's up. Person's there. Person snatches it out of the air. Able to get a D back. Now Strout with it right at midfield. Friedman with a nice move on Abram. Up the line to Gussin. Now dumped to Strout. Strout looking for the around flick. Dumps to Gussin. Strout clears up line. The scuba over the top to Bjorklin. Marked by Travis Bjorklin. Inside throw to Meyer. Meyer around to Strout. Strout with the flick to a wide open Chris Hancock. That's Lucas Dahlman on the mark. Dahlman unable to hold the force. Breeze Strout fires the disc around that mark. Creates the second goal of the game. The Dogfish were able to create a turnover. However, they didn't capitalize as they threw to a covered man. And Purston, leading goal scorer for the Stags and the league, able to get that D. He's an athletic guy, brings a lot of energy to his team athletically and also just just a very fun character to have on your team defensive line for the Stags Dan Shaw Grant Cole Ben McGinn Ben Laurie Khalif El Salam Nevin Root and My Riley Minershag and a big outside in pull that's hanging forever allows the time Allows the Stags time to get down. McGinn on the mark. Around to number 80. That's Kevin Smith. Chen to Schlag. Schlag to Jeffries. Jeffries with his second huck of the game. There's Dan Shaw. Uh, looks like he went up a little early. Disc is laid out. For number six, Drew Kim already has a large, deep gainer. Now at that point, able to score the goal. Nevin Root comes up just a little short on that one. Dan Shaw was tracking it on that huck. Went up just a little too early, unable to touch the disc. And San Francisco able to punch that one in, and they tie the game at twos. A near D there from Root. Kim looks like he's filling this void left by Kittredge and Mac Taylor. There's Yo Kawa Oka with the pull for the dogfish. Friedman brings it down, centers to Strout. Strout marked by Travis. Swung over to Hancock. Brooklyn cuts across. Hancock sees him. Meyer streaking deep. Jeremy Meyer. Nearly in, Purston in the end zone, just out of the reach. That's number one, Gary Dixon. Dixon with it in the middle, marked by Purston. Kawaoka with it. Travis now with it at midfield, marked by Strout. And Travis puts it deep. Disc is up. Friedman's there. Number 10, James Pollard able to bring that one in. That's the first break of the game. San Francisco able to take take advantage of the miscue there from Meyer. Throws it just too far for Purston. And James Pollard full extension. Then the lefty to number zero, Adam Farron. Defensive line for Dogfish. Number five, Devin Anderson. That's 
13, Tyler Grant. 16, David Abram. Lucas Thalman with the disc. Number 35, the number 11, Zach Travis. The number 19, Yo Kawaoka. It's number four. Andrew Hagen. O-line for the hometown Portland Stags. Chris Hancock, Breeze Strout, Jeremy Norton, Cody Bjorklund, David Gussin, Minor Shagan. We have a false start there. Disc will be re-pulled. We are having technical difficulties with the scoreboard here at the field. Players will resume play shortly. Finish out that line for the Stags. That's Riley Minor Shagan, David Gussin, and number 17, Rafi Hayes. All the players on the Portland Stags right now do play on Portland's club team, Rhino. They have a year under their belts of experience. MLU, there's a shop discount. Game day 15, 15% off MLU League gear. Still working out the clock issues. Dalman trying to stay loose. While they're trying to get the clock fixed, we're going to take a quick moment to thank our sponsors, Friction Gloves. Friction Gloves, the official glove provider of the MLU. Also, Five Ultimate, the official apparel provider for the MLU. They're true lovers of the game and have built their company with a vision for growing the sport and outfitting those who play it. Visit them at fiveultimate.com or follow them on Twitter, twitter.com backslash fiveultimate. Also, Innova, the official disc of the MLU, is Innova Pulsar, designed in cooperation with players and staff of the MLU. The new Pulsar is the perfect disc for the pro game. Get your Pulsar today at shop.mlu.com or visit innovadisc.com for a look at the rest of their product line, including world-class disc golf gear for those of you disc golfers. That promotion we were earlier trying to run was one for the MLU shop. You can get your favorite team gear at shop.mlu.com. Use the game day only code of game day 15 for a 15% off discount. All the sweet apparel you see out here. Also like to thank Elemental Technologies Technologies. One of the main reasons we're able to bring you this game is our partner, Elemental Technologies. Elemental is a leading supplier of video solutions for multi-screen content delivery, providing unmatched solutions for more than 250 leading media franchises worldwide. To learn more, please visit www.elementaltechnologies.com and follow at Elemental Tech on Twitter. All right, and we're set to play. There's Tyler Grant with the outside-in pull. Finally got that clock issue situated. Jeremy Norton stops the roll. Centers to Hancock. Marked by Travis. Swung all the way across the field to Bree Strout. Strout back to Hancock. Hancock to Norton. 
Lots of space out there. Norton finds Miner Shaggin on the sidelines. Now back to Norton. Back to Miner Shaggin, marked by Anderson. Miner Shaggin finds Gusson. Hancock swings across to Strout at midfield. There's Miner Shaggin with the inside break to Hancock. Good flow here from Gusson, moving it around. Stall count gets high. High release backhand to Hancock. Up the line to Norton, marked by Travis. Norton finds Bjorklin. Hancock up the line, five yards outside the end zone. Lefty dangerous pass there from Hancock. A round flick to Norton. Norton had people in the end zone and elects to float it high for Miner Shag and he skies above David Abram. Stags able to stop the bleeding, tie the game at threes. Jeremy Norton played his college days at Whitman, the Whitman Suites. Played his high school days in Seattle. One of the many Seattle talents to be evident in the current elite players around the country. D-line out there for the Stags. Nevin Root, Khalif El Salam, Ben McGinn, Grant Cole, Ben Laurie, Dan Shaw. Disc in the middle with Schlag. Schlag over to Will Chen. Will Chen back to Schlag. It's like Stags are in a zone. There's the double team. Jeffries with it. He already has two hucks on the day. Jeffrey to Greenwood. Greenwood marked by Root. Greenwood up the line. Smith with the disc. Swings across to Greenwood. Jeffries up the line. Back to Jeffries in the middle of the field. Looks like we do have a call on the field. That will be a technical foul, although I do not know who it was given to. That looks like a 20-yard loss. Dogfish moving back. Jeffries marked by El Salam. Jeffries played his college days at Stanford. El Salam, of course, at University of Washington. And the Stags, tight D, force a turnover. Disc is out for El Salam. Just too far for the young athletic cutter. Stags squander that opportunity to get right back in the game, bring the game back on serve, and go up 4-3. Looking for El Salam. He's a dynamic player. Ben McGinn just puts too much of an edge on that, and it sails past. Now Nick Schlag walks it to the line. He's marked by McGinn. Schlag with the around break to Greenwood. Greenwood inside to Jeffries. Jeffries, his third huck of the game going up. There's Dan Shaw on Drew Kim. We've seen this before. Dan Shaw able to go up and get the D. However, we do have a call on the field. Fans are not happy about it. I'm sure you can hear them booing. Dan Shaw, a local favorite. Disc will be Drew Kim's right at the goal line. Looks like there was some contact. Major League Ultimate different than the 11th edition USA Ultimates rules. And the players can't talk about it. There are referees out there. So Drew Kim with it on the sideline. Disc goes up. That's Eric Greenwood in the back of the end zone, unmarked. Stags focusing in on the front part of the end zone. They totally forget about the back part of the end zone. And the Dogfish are able to score. They take the lead 4-3. There's a fluttery scuba over the top to Eric Greenwood. Greenwood comes down with it. Greenwood played his college days at the University of Oregon. 
graduated in 2008, plays club with San Francisco Revolver. O-line for the Stags. We have Adrian King, Breeze Strout, Eli Friedman, Bjorklin, Chris Hancock, Timmy Purston, and Dan Meyer, Jeremy Meyer, excuse me. There's Tyler Grant with another large outside in pull. Not much float on that one. Now Adrian King with it. Adrian King holsters the huck over to Hancock. Hancock back to King. Stags losing yards but maintaining position. There's Jeremy Meyer. A great cut into that space to Friedman. Friedman to Adrian King. King to Hancock. Hancock marked by Grant. Low throw to Meyer at midfield. Meyer to Purston. Purston to Hancock. Hancock puts it out to space. There's Bree Stroud and Bree Stroud fully extends and comes down with that one. Little elbow spike there. He's not scared of the spotlight. Flashy spike from him. Portland Stags able to answer an offensive point from the Dogfish. Hancock puts it out in space. You know Bree Strout's going to give it his all. Able to come down with it. Fans, you've only been hearing me on the day, but it's your lucky day. You'll be able to hear Mr. Kevin Minderhout joining me here in the live feed. Thank you, Jackson. Welcome, Kevin. It's good to be here. Good to have you. I like to have a little color, and I'm sure the fans will as well. Well, we'll see what we can do. All right, there's a pull from the Stags. Stags able to get down on defense. Schlag over to Chen. Chen floats it out to Kim. Kim marked by Root. Green one with it at midfield. Marked by Minor Shagan. Just goes up to Schlag. Schlag falls over. Two hands over the top. Maintains possession. Inside throw. That was a quick release. However, official rule, travel. And those travels are turnovers here in the uh, MLU. They are. Very fortunate, fortunate play. And it's strange that, that that break throw got off. They were putting up a pretty flat mark. Yeah, it was an inside throw. However, able to get through, but... Disc floats out. Eric Greenwood almost... Able to D that. Looks like we have a call. Uh, they just changed the rule last week. It's now 10 yards on every every foul call. So before, that would have been a 5-yard penalty. However, this time it's a 10-yard gainer. Minor shagging marked by Kim. Minor shagging with the flick to El Salam. El Salam looks upfield. He had, he had Ben McGinn open there. Had McGinn open. Root on the sidelines with Cole at midfield. Cole puts it to space. Dis sails out of bounds. We do have a call on the field. See if this affects possession. I'm not sure why Salon, or why uh, Khalif didn't hit um, McGinn there. He had McGinn wide open downfield and just looked him off. They were forcing backhand, uh, had had the open look, saw something else he liked. Yeah, it looks like we do have a timeout here. We're going to take a quick break and be back with you in a second.
Welcome back to first quarter action. There's Bjorklund with it. He finds Friedman. Friedman with the inside break to Purston. Purston looks upfield, marked by Dahlman. There is an inadvertent whistle. Play will resume. No change. Disc is in. Dump to Strout. Strout to Bjorklin. Bjorklin fakes the hammer. Bjorklin around to Hancock. Hancock with the fake. There's only eight seconds left. Disc goes up. Ooh, Staggs looking for a late goal as time expires. We do have two players down. That's Lucas Dahlman and Devin Anderson. I think we're going to get a look at it here. I didn't see anything in the live action that indicated they ran into each other, but... Uh, I think it's clear right there that they did, in fact, run into is. each other. We do hope that those players are all right. Anderson's getting up. Looks like he's a bit shaken up. Dahlman seems to be the one more injured on the play. Trainer's out there with him. So there was there was a break in the first quarter. Dogfish able to break Portland's offense on a miscue from Jeremy Meyer looking for Persons. The throw just sails too far. Although the score is tied, San Francisco is up a break. Scary moment whenever you see two players collide. Uh, can we look at it again? It looked like he got a little bit of uh, maybe a cleat there to the face. I don't know. Their heads looked like they were on the same plane and they almost collided. We're going to take another look at it. Oh, yeah. Cheek to cheek shot. I it's hard. It's hard good. to tell what went down there. Hopefully, he'll be okay. They got the trainer down there, so dogfish are going to have to to take that and know that the trainers are going to take care of him and uh, move on to the move on with the game here. They've got they got a break up. They don't want to let the um, they don't want to let that hurt their momentum, which is uh, often very difficult. You know, when a, a player that brings a lot of emotion and intensity to your team, like Dahlmeyer, goes down. Mm -hmm. especially talking to safety the coach of the dogfish he was saying that they were looking for Dahlman to fill the void left by Martin Cochran Martin Cochran has been a main player for San Francisco club teams always guards the other team's premier deep cutter and Dahl Dahlman is a very passionate voice uh, also a polar bears player uh, halftime at uh, nationals last year uh, Gave a rousing speech to the um, to the polar bears. Yeah, and I think you know he's the kind of guy that he's going to be able to do that. You know, one way or the other, he's going to be able to benefit his team, even if he can't get back here and play. Uh, he's going to be able to help them out from the sideline um, with that passion. So. Now he's he's still out there on the field. Um, Dalman's still down. He looks to be smiling down there, which is encouraging. And he's sitting up. You would think it, it's it's going to be concussion related. Yeah, especially when you have a head to head collision. And that's that's something in sports. You know, the concussions are have become a really big a focus, huge thing. As we learn more about the the health consequences of the. Um, head-to-head -head impacts. I would say if they're th if that's what they're thinking about, we're not going to see Dahlman back. That's true, especially if he, if he blacked out at all or lost any sort of consciousness. You really don't want him going out on the field. He's the type of player that's going to throw his body around. So if he does go back out there, 
he runs the risk of potentially furthering that injury. But he is a competitor. I'd like to think that Dalman will go out there if he's capable. And almost if he's not capable. I'm sure he'd want to. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think the heart's there. The heart is there. So what do we need to see from uh, Rhino here in the second quarter? The uh, Stags, actually, using a club team name there. Portland Stags, excuse me. Dalman up now. So good things from him, hopefully, later in the game. Stags, they, they really only had one miscue. It was uh, Jeremy Meyer looking for Timmy Person in the end zone. The throw just went a little too far. Person stretched all of his 6'3 frame out there, couldn't get a hand on the disc. If Meyer waits just one second and puts that throw just a little bit more to space... Person's, you know, he's a big playmaker for the Stags. He's a big playmaker out there on the field, big man. I think you want to see those aggressive shots. That's something Coach Becker talked about prior to the game, is that they wanted to take advantage of the missing downfield of right. the dogfish. Right, missing Mac Taylor, Bo Kittreds, Martin Cochran. Those are some huge players that have been, been the top defensive, top deep, Deep defensive and offensive receivers for, you know, the last five or six years. They've been playing at the top level for a long time, no doubt. You look I, the reason that they're gone is uh, they're working on the uh, USA team. Right, the World Games team. Yeah, their, their commitment to the USA, U, the national team, has taken them away this weekend. Those three players, Cochran, Taylor, and Kittredge, they all played together in Boulder at the University of Colorado. Then they played for Johnny Bravo, a club team out of Boulder. And then they all moved to San Francisco to play with San Francisco's Revolver and fused together with Stanford's uh, handling core of Robbie Cahill, Mark Sherwood, Nick Schlag. And in the last couple of years, they've been the best team in the world, winning worlds. And, and their arrival in San Francisco coincided a lot with the success of Revolver in the club season. Back to the game. Back to the game. Second quarter underway. Just in the middle of the field. Oh, McGinn, nearly a D. Greenwood with it. Marked by Minershag and Kim in the middle. Kim puts it up to space. Schlag all day long. No mark. There's McGinn. Schlag inside break. Dump to Kim. King. Kim, high release backhand. Throw goes up, and that is number 80, Kevin Smith, with his second goal of the game. And they were, the Stags were having trouble stopping the dead side throws there. Uh, they put on a great uh, mark over on the far side of the field, coming around the backside, preventing the dump. Dogfish, smart enough, they here. they were able to clear. They cleared the um, they cleared the dump, brought somebody from uh, upfield to the backfield, and uh, were able to get those around. And Stags never were able to to quite. Yeah, and uh, the Dogfish were able to create all that space because this field is ten yards wider than what these players are used to playing. So with ten yards more space, and as precise as these throwers are, really able to work the disc around and find holes in the defense. The horizontal cutting in with the MLU field is much more available than uh, when you have a smaller field. You don't have as many opportunities for the defense to come off and, and make a play. You drop this there from Purston. And difficult that's a tough throw. catch. Very that's difficult tough catch. catch. Laying out forward, trying to pancake it. Gustin with the low throw. Now Yo with it. And any time that you're coming straight at the thrower, it makes it increases the difficulty of that throw. And Purston gets it back on D. I think we just saw another example of that where the cutter's coming directly at it. There's not a lot of room for error. He he was off by maybe a yard, and it was just enough to uh, to not even be close on that one. And Thor or Purston is all over the place. Pose the line to keep possession. There's Eli Friedman. Disc goes up. Friedman, Travis with the tip, but Friedman gets possession. Folks, it's not snowing here. That's Pollen falling on the field, and Bree Stroud puts it up to Purston. And that's 
Adam Hagen, Andrew Hagen, excuse me, climbing the ladder. He is definitely an individual that can get up. Yeah. I think we can both remember seeing Adam Hagen, 2010 Club Nationals, almost single-handedly stopped Ego's run. That's Yo Kawaoka calling a timeout. So they're going to take a timeout, and we are too. Uh, please stay tuned for more second quarter action. Welcome back to the second quarter action of the MLU. That's Nick Schlag going to bring the disc in. Week four. Very, very peculiar offensive setup here. I guess that's the defensive setup as double teams are allowed. That's McGinn and Root marking Schlag. Root over to Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith winds up. And throws a disc as far as he can. Khalif El Salam tracking it down. Unable to get that D. Drew Kim. Been a big player for them all day. Greenwood up the line to Schlag. Schlag throws a beautiful scuba. Salam. Bit of a gratuitous bid there. And that's number 34, Evan Boucher. They just never were able to catch up. No. Totally behind the double team. And they were behind from the beginning. We'll see on the replay... Marnashagan tries to come in, save McGinn, who was behind, opened himself up for the goal. Sometimes you just got to gotta read that, and that's a, that's a moment. If he doesn't make that play, they know they're going to score. Right. That's a, a mental breakdown there from Marnashagan. You never want to leave a player open in the end zone because then you obviously can have a score. It's always more advantageous to let a player in the playing field proper hold the disc as opposed to letting an offender open in it, the end zone. It's similar to the to the uncatchable or the undeable bid. When you bid, when you didn't have a chance of getting it, and you, you, you leave your team weak in the backfield because you don't have a markup. Right now, Bjorklund with it on the sidelines. Hancock with it, swings across to Bree Strout. Tons of space over there for Purston. Stags are looking pretty deep on the field right now. Really making it hard to um, get a huck off when, you're, when you've got a guy 40, 40, 50 yards deep. Hancock, huge swing across the field. I'm just not used to seeing the disc travel that far horizontally. And that's something, that, that's something these teams are working on. Stags moving it all the way back to their end zone. They've lost a, a lot of yards here, Jackson. That's a, at least 30 yards of loss. Friedman streaking deep. Person with it on the sideline. Person throws to his college teammate, Hancock. There's Eli Friedman wide open under, but Hancock electing to throw it to Person. And Person comes down with it. One of those jump balls. Huck it and hope. There's Bree Strout, Strout with it. Throws a blade. Finds Person. That's his third goal of the game. Timmy Person filling up the stat lines. Three goals, two Ds. A couple of great grabs. And that's what we talked about earlier. He's now one one for three. On deep throws? On, on deep receptions? I, I believe so. Or no, no two, two for three. 
because he had that first one and then the one where uh, Hagen deed him and then he just caught that one. I think they should keep going back to it. I think I think it's 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 what's gonna uh, it's where their advantage lies right now with uh, Purston downfield. Yeah, they're, they're, the Stags' offense was very stagnant there. They had the whole field was covered deep, and they were trying to create movement with their handlers, but all they were really doing was losing yards. They did that for 30 yards, four, five, six passes. Hancock, even though there's a player 10 yards upfield of him, he looks them off and hucks it deep right away to Purston. And with the, with the extra big field, it can be tempting to, to lose those yards, but at some point you have to get them back. And, and the Stags were having trouble getting them back there. Mm-hmm. There's Chen swung around to Schlag. Schlag marked by Root. El Salam. That's that bid that I was deep. talking about where... The no D. Yeah, the no D. Oh, Eric Greenwood. And, and the bid opened up... On it. The bid opened up the huck. Exactly. An unmarked offender. Much easier to wind up and throw when no one's in your way. Now there's Ben McGinn, dumps to Dan Shaw. Shaw marked by Boucher. Minor Shagan with the flick around to El Salam. El Salam putting it deep. Grant Cole is not going to get that one. He had Cole, but that was a tough throw. He was deep. El Salam pumped up from that bid. Felt like he disrupted things. Gets the disc in his hands. Maybe showing a little inexperience there. Looking for the big shot. I think Cole was about 30 yards deep when, when Salam got the disc on the sideline. It's, that's a very hard throw. The way to make that one successful, if Cole takes his cut to Salam the dead side another bid. and El Salam can get the, the dead side huck, it's something the Japanese team uses a lot. Um, it's going to make your, your chances of success in that area much greater. All right, Smith with it now, marked by McGinn. Sideline's a tough spot to be. You do have a whistle on the field. That looks like the observer signaled a pit call. We don't see too many of those. No. I think part of that is the, the bigger field, it's much more difficult to find yourself in a pick situation. Right. Boucher with it, marked by Shaw, right at midfield. Shaw open to Kim. El Salam on the mark. Kim to Smith. Smith to Eric Greenwood. Second time, Eric Greenwood unable to come in with it. It's like that disc almost caught a gust of wind or so and sailed over his head. Greenwood, another, another jumper. Yeah, he may be short, but I've seen him, Sky Guys, a foot taller than him on the regular. There's Nevin Root with it, marked by Schlag. Root with the scuba over the top to Ben Laurie. Ben Laurie, a very athletic player, playing at his home school, Lewis and Clark, right now. There's El Salam, dumps to Minor Shagan. Minor Shagan up the line, back to El Salam. El Salam to McGinn. El Salam streaking deep. McGinn looks him off. That looked like a good opportunity right there, but McGinn already has a turnover. Looks like Coach Becker asking for a timeout there. Right, so players are going to take a timeout. No commercial, no timeout. Nope. So we're not going to take a timeout. Clearly, McGinn and Becker having words. McGinn fired up. Looks like that that is a sub call. I believe Bjorklin subbed in right there. Oh, no, that's a offense. That's a full sub right there. That was a O-line subs in for the D-line as the D-line is able to get the turn. You know, one thing that I saw there, Jackson, was too much vertical cutting. The one time that El Salim came across horizontally, picked up the disc, no problem. Too much vertical cutting coming straight back at the disc. Mm-hmm. If, we, if they can move the disc horizontally a little bit more with the cutters, I think you're going to see them open up getting open more frequently. So as the Stags put in their offensive line, San Francisco answers by putting in their defensive line. 
players out on the field now for the Stags. Gus and Purston, Strout, Meyer, Bjorklund, Friedman, and Hancock for San Francisco. We have Travis, Hagen, Grant, Abram, Kawaoka, Anderson, and Pollard. Now Bjorklund putting it deep. Looking for Friedman. Abram too fast for him. You think that's what he what Coach Becker drew up? <laughs> Not exactly. Knowing those two players, they played a lot of college together. They play club together. That's Bjork Bjorkland and Friedman. Results in a turnover. Kawaoka, the around throw to Pollard. P Pollard marked by Bjorkland. Inside their own end zone. Pollard up the line to Abram. Abram to Hagen. Abram with it to Anderson, marked by Strout. Now Grant with it, nearly at midfield, marked by Gusson. Abram burns Friedman up the line. Abram back to the middle to Kawaoka. Kawaoka to Travis, 10 yards outside. Beautiful inside throw to Tyler Grant from Zach Travis. Meyer shading a little bit much to the around throw. I think Gusson got caught too far on the on the uh, away side there. Right. Playing defense. Like as soon as that disc got swung over to the near side, uh, looking at your your screen, Gusson should have immediately started transitioning into that space. It looks like he was waiting for Grant to make that cut to start moving over. Right. As as a mark there, you, you're always able to learn look over your back shoulder and see if there's even a player there. So see if you even need to be on that side, if you can shade over towards the middle and maybe take away that inside throw. And if you are able to do that and there's no one there, then obviously they're not going to throw the around throw because no one's there. Now Grant with a pull for the Dogfish. McGinn takes it down. See if McGinn able to relax his emotions. Centers to his college teammate, Norton. McGinn with it. Minoshog in there making that horizontal cut that I was just talking about earlier. McGinn with it. Big handler out, out of Whitman. A Walla Walla Sweets. Ooh, a near D from Abram. Here's John Thornton marked by Abrams. Thornton to Lori, wide open on the open side. Lori to Miner Shagan. Miner Shagan with a cheeky backhand blade. I think that throw was a bit behind Lori. I was trying to think of what to call that. I, the, An Oyo? Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it reminds me of the outside in, inside out break, but. It's almost a throw that you throw in mini. Just that real quick, doesn't doesn't even and, follow and through, just flicks Pollard his wrist out there. got a piece there. of it. But it might have helped. It was not, that was not going to be floating. That's true. The, the, the hand gave it a little bit of air under it. I think may have may have helped it out. Allowing it to stay in the air a bit longer. Looks like we have some sort of ruling here. It was the offsides called on the Stags. They will be pulling from the middle of their end zone known as the reverse brick. On the other side of the field, Dogfish able to stand 10 yards outside their end zone. Schlag electing to play the disc rather than let it go out of bounds there. I think that's a smart choice. Defense not set up. Now Boucher puts it deep to Greenwood. And the third time's a charm for the Dogfish. Eric Greenwood able to bring that in. Score his first goal of the game. And that's a great throw by Boucher. You can tell that he took his time. He saw. He really put 
full form into that, stayed in balance, able to put it on a line to the very fast Eric Greenwood. That's that's the kind of play you want for Greenwood. Greenwood only standing at about five feet, five inches tall. And he, he is able to get up, but he's going to beat people to the disc with his legs a, mo- a lot more than he's going to beat them in the air. The dogfish are playing a vertical stack there. You've got to have somebody capping the back. As the, for the stags? For the stags. You can't, you can't allow... Right, that deep player guarding that, the, the that deep That disc shot. to go up and only have one player back there helping on deep. Just having that player back there saying, There's got to be somebody. Back, I got last you back, gotta you're pull last back. The guy from the middle of the stack, you got to pull somebody and help have that help out back. Here's Meyer to Norton on the sidelines. Stacks almost that midfield floaty throw going up to Purston. Purston with someone on his back. And uh. Timmy Purston, my goodness. I think that oh, was well, I think that was just to another day in the office for that guy. I think that was coming to Bo- Bjorklin, but fortunately, person he knows he knows how to help out his team. He knows. I think he's he's looking at Bjorklin there. Never gets the disc to come around, and that's one of the things about the Anova. The Anova disc is nice, going to hold nice its grab. it's going to hold its edge a little bit more. Yeah, and talking to uh, MLU Vice President Nick Darling, he he was discussing how the uh, the disc that they're using is different from the discraft in that it it rewards the good players because it's a bit harder to throw. That's correct. A little bit harder to throw. It it holds its edge. What you release it as is going to be what it does, and the discraft will turn a little bit more. So I think it, it does it does make it easier uh, to throw. I don't think that throw that score was not because of the throw. That was because Timmy Person is he, just he a, went up an there, athlete. Made, he made a great play. There's El Salam tracking Kim. They're gonna Friedman not guarding anyone. Disc goes up. Bladey catch. Great grab from Jeffries. Back to back hammers and back to back goals for Eric Greenwood. Eric Greenwood using those legs, finding himself in the right place. But that's just a silly play there from Free Child. Comes up, thinks he can, he might have a play on it, but allows his player thirty yards open deep. Friedman definitely got beat here, and I'm impressed. Did he even force that throw? The double team rule here bailed him out from an even quicker score. That's a tough catch there. Tough catch there from Jeffries. Not, not an easy catch. And for getting, for having broken defense, he did a very good job. That was that was really a forcing a difficult throw to a very very wide open man. One once again though, we're not seeing the help deep from the stag defense. Right. Friedman was guarding the man on the live side in the open lane, but there was nobody on the dead side coming to help out. Another opportunity here for the Stags. Get a goal. Hancock swings over to McGinn. McGinn to Bjorklin. Bjorklin marked by Anderson. Looks like Dogfish are in a zone. Stags are exploiting the space. Person. And they have time. You don't want to get rushed here. There's still 10 seconds left. Hancock to Norton. Oh, that is a gorgeous throw from Jeremy Norton. With only six seconds left in the first half. A very, very crucial point for the Dogfish, or for the Stags to convert that one. Now they're only down 9-8, heading into half. One goal is, is so much in Frisbee. Excuse me, ultimate. He's just squeaked that one in. You know, one of the things that you see, you, as all the players are, are getting used to the, the timer, the, sco- the game clock, that I'm glad, I, I, I like that the Stags had some patience there. They still had 15 seconds on the clock, and they didn't rush it right away. Sometimes... 
we've seen a lot of players rushing, feeling the 15 seconds is uh -huh. feeling the pressure of the clock and moving the disc too early. All right, disc is going to go up here. It's not going to make it to the end zone. And the first place San Francisco Dogfish lead Portland Stags 9-8 in the second time they've met in the regular season. Big, big plays here in the first half. On San Francisco's side, you saw Drew Kim making a lot of deep throws or uh, uh, receptions. On the flip side for the Stags, Timmy Purston leading the league in goals, doing what he does. Making a couple of jaw-dropping grabs. I think it's been a successful first half for the Stags. Definitely. They're only down one. They are going to come out on defense, so they're going to be looking to uh, to get it back. All right, we're going to go down to our sideline correspondent, Jenica Villamore, down there, uh, talking with a fan about uh, the game. Guys, fans have been chanting this entire time through the first and second quarter. And here with me is actually a family of someone in the Stags. Who are you here to cheer on? What, what? Who are you here to cheer on tonight? Michael Knapp. Michael Knapp, and is that your uncle you said? Yeah. And what's your name? Sophia. Sophia, and how old are you? Ten. Ten years old, and what do you think of the game so far? Well, it's great. I think they're all playing great. What about your uncle? How do you think your uncle's playing? He's good. I haven't seen him out in the field, but I'll be excited to see him in the next quarter. And are you here to cheer for him as well? I certainly am a great fan. One of his very first, in fact. And what's your favorite play of the game so far? One at the end when I got, got getting closer. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming out. We will be catching up with the dogfish coach in, in a little bit. Right now it is 8-9 dogfish. It's really anybody's game. We'll catch up with him in a little bit. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jenica. It's good to see the fans out there.
Yes, please! Give it to me! Give it to me! Don't hurt that beer! No! Give it to me! Tell me if he says something. We were talking about something.
Welcome back, sports fans, for more second half action between the Stags and the Dogfish. Dogfish lead 9 8. Check out some keys to the game here. We we're unable to get them up before the game, but here we're going to focus on keys for the second half. And take a look at how, the, how, we, how they uh, fared. The Dogfish were able to get up early. They got the first, first and only break of this game, going up 3 2. I don't think it's early enough, though. I think it's not enough early. This is, you know, we saw this, um, we saw this last time the Stags played the Dogfish, that it was close in the first first half. But what we were looking for them to do was to to have a, a really successful game as the leader in the Western Conference was to come out here and get a three, four, five break lead. If they could have done that with they're missing big pieces. I think they would have been making a very strong case for potentially the best team in the league. That's true. Last week they they were down 10-5 against Seattle. Able to come back and win that game. However, this time only up 9-8 against the Stags. The Stags, kind of a reeling team. Opened the season with three straight losses. But it's an important, important half for the Stags. I think they've done uh, pretty well so far. Um, patient. We haven't seen too many rushed ones. Uh, they're taking nice shots. When they're going deep, they're going to the right guys. Purston. That's right. Timmy Purston league leading league the Stags. Scoring leader. With three goals. And we haven't seen a lot of trap from the Dogfish. We did see a bit of of zone defense there but not not too much trap with the double team we did see the stags however try the double team and dogfish were able to get out of that very quickly stags unable to catch up on defense If you're watching at if you're watching at home, make sure you go to the MLU online store. We got a special game day promotion for you. Game day 15 that'll get you 15% off all the great merchandise in there. And there's a lot of great stuff out there uh, coming from a couple of our sponsors, Five Ultimate Friction Gloves, providing really quality quality items out there. So use that promotion, game day 15. Head over there. After the game, get yourself some uh, official MOU swag. Second half action about to start. San Francisco up 9-8. Looks like the Stags will be starting out on offense. Offensive line for them. Gusson, Strout, Friedman, Hancock, Bjorklund, Meyer, and Purston. D-line for the Dogfish. Hagen, Abram. Pollard, Tyler Grant, Travis, Kawaoka, and Anderson. And Tyler Grant's a player that's been playing fantastic. He's a player that's not going to fill up the stat sheet with a bunch of goals or assists or something. He's just going to play really stout defense. You can put him on any player, and he will play physical. He's not scared of contact. He's a big body. Put him on a lanky defender. Like person, he can really disrupt things. There's Strout with it. Swings over to Hancock. Hancock marked by Kawaoka. Hancock around to Meyer. Meyer gets up and grabs that to Purston. Purston looking downfield. Now looks backfield to Hancock. Hancock looks off Purston. Throws it behind Friedman. Friedman unable to change direction and gets that. Now Kawaoka walks to pick up. Captain of the Dogfish team. Looking for the second break of the game for the Dogfish. Low throw. Kawaoka looking for a call, not getting it. Stags get it back. Disc goes up to Cody Bjorklin and James Pollard. Now that's one of that's that's one of those patience points right there. Right. When he's on the sideline there, it's a 
infinitely harder throw to huck that one down the line. I think Cody's a great receiver. He's being guarded by somebody taller. Unless it's perfect, low, flat, coming around, landing in, it's even it's going to be hard for him to use his, his big frame to body that guy out. Stags coming out in a double team. Another high hammer. Another high hammer. Now Grant puts the backhand. Timmy Purston laying out large. Anderson, Kevin Anderson able to bring it down. That was a couple of athletic plays right there. He made up some ground. Going back to that uh, Strout Huck to Bjorklund. Bjorklund. Dusty Becker was talking, Coach Dusty Becker was talking about how his team needs to value the disc and they need to realize that that's an offensive point. You have to score right now. You're down in the game. The way you're going to get back in the game is by your offense being patient, focusing on the disc, not turning it over, and marching it down the field with easy horizontal offense, swinging it up, not jamming it down the line. Now they're down two. It's a great place for the dogfish. They're up to second break of the game. Looking to add more to their lead. Tyler Grant set to pull. Strout brings it down. Centers to Norton. Norton over to Strout. Strout back to Norton in the middle of the field. We do have an offensive call or a defensive foul resulting in a 10-yard penalty. Jeremy Meyer walks it up. Marked by Tyler Grant. Meyer swings back to Friedman. Friedman centers to Norton. Norton up the line to Strout. Stroud over to King. Myers going deep. Looks like he came back. Adrian King I not like one to shy away. Observers rule he stayed. He was, he, his foot did not come down inbounds. Take another. Oh. Ah, I see. So one referee ruled he was out the back. Another Referee came in and overruled, saying that his foot did come down inbounds. It's hard to see on the replay there. Really difficult to see. Might be able to get a look at it from here. Now, that's a good choice, though, Jackson. The I think he must have been looking at the orange line back there. Yeah, he was, he was clearly in with both feet. Safty disagreeing. Safety out on the field discussing the call with the referees. Looks like he's not too heated. He's all right with the call. D line out there for the Stags looking to even this game back up. Hurston, Lori, Minershagen, Shaw, Norton, McGinn, and El Salam. Now, I like that choice to Meyer because he's being guarded by somebody smaller than him. And that's the one where patience isn't necessary there. Grant was under him 5, 10 yards, even though did catch up. Meyer was just much taller. Lots of space there, unlike unlike the previous one where he was throwing it into a small box. This time he had a ton of space. Meyer was just able to box out, be taller, no problem. Right, Meyer held that offensive positioning excellently. Now Greenwood with it in the middle of the field, swings over to Kim. Kim to Bosher. Bosher cross field to Schlag. Back to the middle to Greenwood. Dogfish really spreading the field out, finding the holes now up the field to Bosher. Bosher to Chen. Chen cross field to Kim. Kim to Greenwood. Now Kim back with it. Marked by Person. There's a double team. Push pass coming over the top. Chen swings around to Kim. Kim fakes the flick. Throws the backhand to Bauscher. Bauscher with the backhand to Jordan Jeffries. 
pinpoint throw there from Jeffries. Boucher put a lot of heat on that one. Jeffries able to toe the line, extend his hand out. Caught that one with his ungloved hand. See, Boucher gets it in the middle of the field. Fires it. You can tell that disc. Just gets the edge of it. San Francisco pushes their lead back to two. Portland unable to get that break. Now another critical offensive point for the Stags. They need to come up here if they want to come back in this game and they need to convert this offensive point. Bjorklund with it. Swung over to Meyer. Meyer to Gussin. Gussin looking for a dump. Scoobers to Meyer. Meyer looks dump. Now looks upfield. Finds Bjorklund on the sidelines. Bjorklund putting it out to Chris Hancock. Oh. Mr. Friction Gloves unable to bring that one in. And there's another, that's another difference with the end of a disc. It's gonna, it's gonna hold at the end there. Right, Bjorklund put that one out flat and fast. That was a hard laser. Very difficult to get that, to get the pulsar disc to come back around. As you can see with the disc craft diffs, it might have sailed a little bit more flat, allowing Hancock to at least get a hand on it. And it would have died. The disc craft would have. Wow, that was an incredible grab from Hagen. Hagen with it, looking dump. Hagen puts it up. There is a turnover. Bjorklund with the D, now Hancock with it. We do have some whistles on the field. There will be a stoppage. Play there was a stall called. So the turnover must happen at the point of the stall. Bjorklund did D that, and the Stags were able to create some offensive movement, but the disc was actually dead. Disc goes up right away to Gussin, and Eli Friedman cleans up the trash. That's Travis and Gussin, both misread it. Eli Friedman firing those legs. Disc goes up. Heads up play there from Eli Friedman. Abram earlier in the earlier in the game able to beat Friedman to the disc. However, this time Friedman looks like a man on a mission and comes down with the disc in the end zone. Huge point for the Stags, trying to create some momentum. They're only down one. Dogfish. Right, like the comeback is just on the cusp. The stars are aligning. <laughs> Huge drop there from Nick Schlag. Dogfish looking to tie it up. This is a big, big point in the game. Ben McGinn. Brings the disc in, marked by Jeffries. Lori to Miner Shaggin. Miner Shaggin to Timmy Purston. Scores his fourth goal of the game. Very, the crowd is loud. Very calm, cool, and collected throw there from Miner Shaggin. You can see they're looking for dump right away. Miner Shaggin wide open on the swing. Miner Shaggin sees Purston's open. Looks where he has to throw and throws it right where he is. Didn't allow his mind to overthink that one. Didn't overanalyze. He didn't hesitate. He saw his shot. He took it. And Stags are able to get the first break of the game and bring it back to even 11-11. I 
I think uh, I think a few of those planets are starting to line up for the Stags. There's Nevin Root, the outside in pull. That thing had a lot of hang time. There's Chen with it on the sideline to Bowsher. Bowsher marked by Root. Root with active hands on the mark. Greenwood marked by El Salam. Two very athletic players. Like to see some big plays from one of those two. Now Chen with it. Such a stable force for Harvard in his college days. Now up the field to Greenwood. Past midfield. There's Kevin Smith with it. Kevin Smith puts the throw out there to space. And the disc just dies. Looking for Kim. Devin Kim came down with some big, deep receptions earlier in the game. He did have steps, but Kevin Smith unable to bring that disc around. And this would be for their first lead since taking it 1-0 in the first quarter. The crowd really, really firing up now. There's Lori up the line. Rafi Hayes with his first touch of the game. Now McGinn to Miner Shagan. Miner Shagan looking for a dump. Finds McGinn. The Stags are using the whole field. Norton putting it deep to El Salam. Looks That's like Stags' chance of a break sails out of bounds. That's the second throw from Norton that's gone up. I think Norton expecting the disc to turn over doesn't turn over. Last time he got lucky going where the disc was going to float into the middle of the field, Purston was able to come and snag it. This time, not so lucky. Right now the disc will be brought in 10 yards outside the goal line by Will Chen, marked by Ben Lorry. Chen looking dump. Now up the line to Schlag. Schlag crossed the field. A gainer for Kim. Kim with the backhand to Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith not shy of throwing it to the end zone. And Miner Shagan, full extension, unable to bring it down. But Jordan Jeffries, his second goal of the half. Looks like he's a little banged up on that one. Might have rolled an ankle. Someone could have turned over on him. Jeffries, another one of those Stanford players. It seems like Stanford had an... A incredible Callahan nominee for years in a row. It started with Bart Watson back in the day. Then there was Nick Handler. Most uh, Robbie Cahill. Jeffers. Just graduated last year. This is his first year out of college. That was a great catch. Jeffrey's still limping on the sidelines. Looked like he come, came down right on that knee. Never fun, but He'll be back. Talking to Coach Safty. Er, Safty. Safty, excuse me. He was saying that Jeffries was a huge. Was gonna, he was going to be looking to fill the shoes of Kittritz and Taylor as the big deep receiver. It's going to be a big loss for them if he's unable to return. Now Hancock with it on the sidelines. Finds Friedman. Friedman to Adrian King. King to Friedman. Friedman cross field to Hancock. Hancock to Purston. Purston looking for Friedman. King bails him out. King with the big fake. Allows Jeremy Meyer to be wide open under. Now Hancock brings it down. Hancock to Friedman. Friedman to Meyer. Meyer seems to be wide open all point long. And Jeremy Meyer finds Chris Hancock for the goal. And Han Hancock was, was doing work for doing the Stags. Doing work that whole point. Using his legs, lots of handler movement. He saw once David Abrams went for that disc that floated he a bit. He took advantage. He was, Abrams was just trying to catch up the whole time. And that's a good player. That's a good player that sees the defender make a mental error and takes off and doesn't give up the advantage because once once Hancock's ahead of of his defense they're not going to catch up unless Hancock stops right and yeah. nobody came to nobody came on the doctors nobody was there to to help him catch up
Hancock. Dan Shaw with the pull. Schlag brings it down. Dan centers to Chen. Chen marked by Grant Cole. Jeffrey's back in. Looks like he's limping slightly. There's Kim with it. Kim ripping it to Bauscher. Dan Shaw, a near D. Bauscher brings it down. Finds Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith all alone in the end zone. Pretty easy point there from the Dogfish. Not too much pressure. Again, one of the things we keep seeing continually is not having a deep presence. Right, there's no help defense there. Dogfish are doing a great job of cut deep. To have their heads on a swivel because the people they are guarding are engaging them, making them guard them, and that allows all that deep space to work into. There's a couple of bands down there. You'll see the guys wearing the orange bands, and that's uh, in the MLU, that's the personal foul. I, I know one of them was for tacoing the disc after a score. Still working on finding out what the other one was for. If you get two of those, uh, that results in a game ejection for the fans out there at home. There's Thornton with it. Thornton finds King. Stags almost to midfield. King to Strout. Strout around to Norton. Norton looking for a foul call, doesn't get it. I believe that was Adamson with the D. He was activated last week when the Dogfish were shorthanded. He's usually a practice player. That's correct. No longer. No longer. And I bet the Dogfish are glad they've got him. <laughs> Comes in and gets a D. There's Dixon with it. Centers to Pollard. Now Travis. Strout way off the mark. And a drop from Pollard. Becker calls a timeout for the Stags. Only 40 seconds or 39 seconds left in the first quarter. We're going to take a break here and bring you more and bring you the end of the third quarter. Welcome back, Ultimate fans, for the conclusion of the third quarter. And, Jackson, this is what I'm talking about, where clock management is now a very important part of the game. And you have to think, what you absolutely don't want to happen is to turn the disc over in near your own end zone at this point in the game. You don't want that to happen, and you don't want to give them the disc with enough time to come down and score. They've got isolation for Friedman there on the live side. Defense there from Abrams. San Francisco is going to take a timeout. Again, this could be a huge momentum change. A reminder here, uh, clock rules as under one minute, the clock stops for all calls made by the referee. 
a Pakal happens with less than 10 seconds left. Time will stop. It will get reset to 10 seconds. The only time that the clock will, will get reset after a call. Again, clock management, incredibly important. If the dogfish score right now, you know, you've got to imagine what they're thinking. If we score right now, we're going to give the Stags an opportunity to come down, put one in before the end of the half. If they dump swing, put this in with three, four seconds left on the clock, they're going to be coming out on offense again, not giving the Stags a chance. Right, this is an opportunity to take a three-goal lead here because they're only, the Dogfish are only up one. But they're able, if they're able to put this one in with not much time remaining, then they will get the disc. It's a two for one. Or two for zero at this point. Schlag to bring it in. I would not be surprised to see the, the dump early. And it doesn't look like they're going for an immediate score. Well, it looks like they're trying to maintain possession. Looks like they're playing a dominator here with their handlers. Kim with it, losing yards. Now Kim with it. Only four seconds left. Schlag. And that is going to do it. I don't think the D was necessary. I don't think the D was necessary either. But a great play. That's a big defensive stand there from the Stags. That could have, like you said, been a two for zero, but did not happen. Stags hold strong, only down by one. See if they can bring it back in the fourth quarter and get their first victory here in this early Major League Ultimate season. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that's going to get worked out with time, like how do you play that situation? And I think, I think the Dogfish were on to the right idea. Just as a player, you're not used to looking up and seeing a clock. So when the clock is winding down, you're not going to look towards a scoreboard to see what happens. We're going to go down to the field. We're going to go down to the field right now. Our very own Jenica Villamore is down there with Coach Justin Safty. Right now, you guys are up 13-12, and at half, you are up by one as well. What's your strategy? Uh, we got ourselves another barn burner. We're definitely accustomed to this. All of our games have been tight games. Uh, I feel like we've uh, been playing pretty strong and playing the game that we want to play all game. They've been coming down with some 50-50 balls, uh, but uh, I feel pretty good about our chances right now. And speaking of those tight games, because all of them have been very close, what do you tell your team to so that they continue to grit it out? Uh, we got to win with our legs. Late in the game, it's not a time to get heroic with your throws. We got to win with our legs. We can beat our guys under all day. And lastly, you guys are going through a lot of injuries right now, a lot of guys not playing right now. And I saw another one go down at the end of the first quarter. Is that affecting your guys' game at all? Uh, you know, it certainly affects us. Lucas is a, a tremendous player, a great defender, uh, and he's fantastic in the air. You know, it was a great block that he got. It was unfortunate what happened. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're a very deep team, and we're, we're proving it on the field today. And right now, you guys are the number one team in the Western Conference. How do you plan to hold on to that title? Just keep winning. Thanks so much. Good luck. All right, thank you. Right now, again, the score is 13-12 Dogfish. It's anybody's game. We have this team fighting to hold on to their title. And at the same time, the Stags fighting to get their first win of the season. It'll definitely be very interesting to see how this last quarter unfolds. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jenica. Now we have the end of this game coming to you. Ten more minutes left. Stags will be starting on defense. And we got a big one. This game five for the Stags, week four for the MLU. You got to imagine if they can't get a win here, they're going to have an almost impossible battle to any kind of playoff competition. That's true. If they, if they want to compete in the playoffs, definitely going to have to step it up here in the fourth quarter. Only down one. 
This is a huge defensive point. And I'm going to draw your attention once again to the bands being worn by the Dockers players. We've been informed those ones are for those are te those technical fouls are for profanity on the field. Now, looks like we do have an offsides called on the dogfish, potentially delay of game. Stags will be pulling from the big brick, and that's good. They need they need everything they can right now going their way. Whether or not it's calls on the field or great catches by Purston, Friedman picking up. Chen with it to Schlag. Schlag to Kevin Smith. Double team. This goes up to Chen. Chen looking for someone to throw to. Schlag with it. Now Kim with it on the sidelines, excuse me, in the middle of the field. Kevin Smith gets it on the sidelines, marked by Begin. Kevin Smith fires a laser over to the midfield. Now Jeffries throws it around to Bauscher. Bauscher's fired up. Dan Shaw trying to make sure he doesn't cause any injuries. Big point there. That's a tough one. That's a tough one because Minor Shagan comes off to help. Dogfish recognize it, dissect it with the throw across the field. Now Minor Shagan is out in no man's land, unable to help deep, not guarding this guy. Shaw, the unfortunate recipient of what was probably a smart play by Minor Shagan, just Great. unable to make a decision there after, after they recognize the help swing the disc. It's a great job of Voucher maintaining offensive positioning. He had a beat on the disc and did not allow Dan Shaw to get inside of him. He caught the disc with the defender at his back, not allowing the defender to close any sort of distance between him and the disc. And I, I don't like what I see the body language down there for the Stags right now. They're down two nine minutes. If they don't score this left. one, Hancock with it on the sidelines. Hancock putting it to Purston. Like there is a foul call down there. <laughs> foul on Hagen. That's almost a... That foul there is almost a good choice. It, it's There's not no gain, and you're stopping a potential score. A potential score. That was Chris Hancock with the assist huck to Purston. Purston tripped up, finds Hancock for the goal. I, again, I think it's the right choice. I think but so, too. There's not a ton of time. I mean, there is a ton of time left, but you're in the fourth quarter. you got to score. you got to bring the lead. As you got to get it down as fast as you can. And taking those deep shots to Timmy Person, who has just dominated downfield all game long, only been beat once. you got to like your chances going deep to him. Lots of times you'd call that a 50-50 disc, but not with Person there. That's what they've got to do, but it's also a tough way to win a game. Now Schlag with it, around to Jeffries. Jeffries holsters the huck, finds Kim. And that was, if Jeffries could have gotten that one to Boucher downfield. Kim to Schlag, now Boucher with it. Boucher marked by Shaw. Schlag around to Greenwood. Greenwood marked by Salam. Now Kim with it. Kim to Kevin Smith, marked by McGinn. McGinn holstered the bit there wisely. Patient offense here from the Dogfish. Nice around throw there from Chen to Greenwood. Greenwood fires up the line to Will Chen. 
Will Chen goes up with two hands and brings it down. Grant Cole was there. Dogfish increase their lead to two. You're not seeing much, much uh, flap in the Dogfish offense. They're playing very patient, not taking. They're not playing. They're playing energized. Right. They're not playing frantic. They're playing energized. They want this game. I thought there was some there was some good D there by the Stags prevented some downfield opportunities that had to get looked off because they had some good marking. Not because the downfield D was necessarily in place, but because the marking was strong. So they they need to put that together with the downfield game in order to start converting, getting some turns and, and being able to convert those uh, defensive points into breaks. Hancock it with. With it on the sidelines to Friedman. Friedman to Hancock. Friedman up the line. Hancock to Person. Unmarked. Stags back in their own end zone. Inside throw to Breeze Sprout. And they're not getting much disc movement upfield. That's Gary Dixon with the foul on Chris Hancock. 10-yard penalty. Stags now with it in the front of their end zone. Friedman looking deep, doesn't throw. Goes up to Jeremy Meyer. Very difficult one-handed grab from Meyer. Now Person with it to Gussin. Gussin to Strout. Strout marked by Abram. Friedman up the line. Friedman to Strout. Strout back to Friedman. Very stagnant downfield cutting from the Stags. It's almost minimal. They're only having offensive movement. Now Hancock wide open. Rips the hammer to Gussin. Pretty throw there from Chris Hancock. Starting to step up in the later stages of this game. Scoring goals, throwing hucks, hammers over the top. He's doing work once again. Once again, Chris Hancock doing work. He's not stopping out there. He's continuing his motion the whole time. He's finding the weaknesses in, the, in his defender's play, moving himself into the right position to take advantage of those. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank our sponsors Friction Gloves. Friction Gloves is the official glove of the provider of the MLU. These all-weather gloves are specifically designed for ultimate players combining the tackiness of receiver gloves with rubberized grip for better catches and throws. Look for Friction Gloves catch of the week throughout the season and get an official MLU pair for yourself from the MLU shop. Visit frictiongloves.com to learn more. Schlag with it outside his end zone marked by Hancock. Schlag and Chen have been doing a lot of the handling for the Dogfish. They've been very solid. Schlag, of course, plays club for Revolver. He's a near D from Purston. And the just sails out of bounds. Just enough pressure there. Just enough pressure from Rafi Hayes to force him out of bounds. Rafi Hayes Relatively new to this game, only been playing for a couple of years, but playing on a big stage, able to close the gap and force that throw out of bounds. Now Ben Laurie with it. And Laurie dumps to Hancock. One Han thing. Oh. Go ahead, Kevin. One thing I noticed on their last possession is they're coming around on their dumps. They're putting on a three quarters mark where they're taking away the the marker is taking away the downfield. Now there's Hayes with it to Laurie. Lori looking downfield and looking for his dump. That's a big swing. That's a huge swing, very late in the stall count. And Ben McGinn throwing the hammer to El Salame, Timmy Purstens! Hello! Where did he come from? Wow. 
That is a huge point for the Stags. They tie it at 15. Did they need that or what? Oh, my. Hello, Timmy Purston. Welcome to the big show. And, again, that's not his first hammer. No, not scared to, to throw throws. You got to think that Dusty Becker will be talking to him about that throw. Lucky that it worked out. It's um, like El Salam might have taken a little shot to the face. Amazing piece of, piece, you know, awareness for El Salam to get that disc up into play. After it was deed by Greenwood, yeah, he manages to get his hand out here and keep that alive for person. This crowd is fired up. The crowd is and so am I. Let's go. 15, 15, 450 left. Derry down that first win. Ben Lori with the pull. Gary Dixon takes it down to Yo Kawaoka. Kawaoka to Pollard. Pollard marked, marked by McGinn. Travis with a nice cut. It's an under on Miner Shagan. Travis looking dumb. Inside throw. Now back to Kawaoka. Marked by Lori. Kawaoka up the line to Dixon. Dixon throws a laser of a backhand. To number two. I, I believe you know his name. Practice player. He's a, he's a roster player. He's got a D. And this was... And a goal. Cody read... Bjorklund read the play. Unable to come over... Quick enough to help out. It was... A, and, and credit the thrower there. Credit the, credit the flat laser. Because if that had hung in the air even a little bit, Bjorklund was hungry and ready to go get that D. When it went up, I wasn't sure about it. But definitely the right choice. Right, and you can accredit that to the Pulsar disc holding its edge. You're able to throw those lasers because whatever angle you throw it at, it's going to hold that angle throughout the air. And, and stays up in the air longer. Now Friedman takes down the pull to Strout. Strout to Friedman. Friedman to Purston. Purston to Gussin. King unmarked. King marked by Grant. I think that was a high count. High count. King forced to throw it deep. Friedman unable to come down with it. Now Dogfish looking to get a break. This would be a huge, huge point for them if they were able to convert. Grant with it marked by King. Grant to Anderson. Hagen now. On the sidelines, back to Hagen. Hagen to Brammer. Now Grant, Hagen, only 10 yards outside the end zone. Dogfish are methodically working it up the field. And they've got to get a stop here. Using the horizontal space now. Handler movement. Dumps to Hagen. Back to Abram. Safety going to get a timeout in there. Didn't like what he was seeing. And I don't blame him. They were looking a bit stagnant there. They had a set where all the cutters were supposed to do nothing. Right. This will just allow his offense a chance to get a breezer, a chance to maybe draw up a play, dump swing, maybe create an ISO for one of their faster cutters. You look for maybe Eric Greenwood in there. boucher has been playing big. Kim also been playing large. Now, I wonder if we'll see a double team coming out. We've seen a lot of that double teams coming out of timeouts to force the disc back and get the get the offense out of whatever set play they were going to run. You can effectively take away the breaks, the the live side and the break side with that double team if you put it on for just one two seconds in that stall count, then reset just to get them out.
it looks very similar to what we saw earlier where they're going to have three players in the back spreading it wide. El Salim's got to take advantage of that try and help out as much as he can. Be aware that he's going to leave his guy a little open. I think he's too close right now. That's Kim Isod in the center. Schlag with the disc marked by Shaw. And Minor Shagan has his dump. He's got a lot of work to do. The matchup to watch right now is Kim and Minor Shagan. There's Schlag to Kim. Minor Shagan dumps to Chen. Chen to Kim. Minor Shagan, a near D. And you could just hear it in the crowd, just deflated as the dogfish score right there. Just oh, so close. Oh, so close, as you just said. Almost looked like he got a hand on it. Unable to affect the throw enough. And Dogfish increase their lead, or take the lead and back. It, excuse me, increase their lead to two. It is silent out there in the crowd. This crowd was rocking and roaring for the last 15 minutes. Big plays from Purston, Hancock. Hammer from McGinn. An unlikely catch by Purston. And then the, but the methodical offense of the Dogfish able to convert that possession into a goal. The must score. The must this score. This is it. If they don't... It's a great coaching move, move by the Dogfish coach. I think you got to put in your, your best, who, your hottest players right now. There's Hancock to Strout. Strout cross field to Bjorklund. Bjorklund dumps to Strout. And again, another, I think that's a good foul. Bjorklund going up there. If he gets the disc to Bjorklund, Bjorklund's in power position, ready to get that disc off. He's got no defender on him. Strout wasting no time throwing to Timmy Purston. That's a guaranteed goal. Great throw from Breeze Strout to Timmy Purston. I believe that's six goals in the game now for Timmy Purston. Five or six. Came into the game leading MLU in goals with 14. I believe that's his 20th goal of the season. They're, they're hanging around, only down one. That was a, a pretty quick conversion. They, did, they wasted less than 30 seconds on that point. It's a big goal. Now for the defense in there for the Stags, you're looking at Hancock, Friedman, El Salam, Minor Shagan, McGinn, Hurston. Hurston seems like he's been in the entire second half. And, uh, and Lori Ben Lori. Time management here is something to start thinking about. That's number 80, Kevin Smith. Looking for the wide open Will Chen on the sidelines. Just fires it too far. Asking the Stags we to get back the in the two game. Two minute mark. Stags down by one with the disc. 25 yards outside their end zone. Lori with the flick to Friedman. Friedman marked by Kim to McGinn. They've still got a timeout here, Friedman which is. Minor Shagan. Minor Shagan to Friedman. Keeping it on that side. There's El Salam tracking that one down. There's Minor Shagan. Minor Shagan to Timmy Purston. Oh my goodness. Why would you throw to anyone else in the end zone if you're the Portland Stags? He's You've a guaranteed go. goal. That's seven of eight times they've scored while throwing to Timmy Purston in the end zone. Just look for a person. It's just fun to watch. You just got to love seeing a player come out. He's leading the league in scores, generating statistics. He comes out here and increases his total by almost 50% in the game. And putting, oh, he does increase it by 50%. Putting, it's incredible. Putting the Stags into the game without Purston tonight. Without Purston, the Stags would be hopeless. They, They'd be down 17-10. They, need, they owe him a big hug. 
I, Becker using the Stags last time out. Must have seen something he didn't like. The players out there on the field were out there at the previous point, and a lot of them have been out there. Just giving them a rest? A lot of this quarter. I think they are just giving them a rest, especially Timmy Person. I think that's his fifth point in a row. Chris Hancock also up there. Friedman's been playing a lot. Ben McGinn. El Salam's been out there for four in a row. I think that's a good choice. Just the time. Because you have to get it. Catch your breath. Focus on what's ahead of you. There's 90 seconds left. The game is tied. It's really anyone's anyone's game right now. Sags will be pulling to the Dogfish. Dogfish have had methodical offense this night, this evening. <laughs> O-line out there for Dogfish, Chen, Bowsher. Jeffries, Greenwood, Schlag, Kim, and Smith. Now Jeffries with it, marked by Lori. Stall card downing up there, and Jeffries turfs it. My goodness, he's been a solid thrower all day for them. Just an easy 15-yard flick. He throws it five yards. Now Ben again with it. Up the line to Lori. Lori to Miner Shagan. Stags almost in the end zone. Now Lori up the line and Lori scores! The Portland Stags are in it to win it tonight, folks. They're up one. We got 53 seconds left. This is why you watch the games. That crowd is loud. God, this is a great atmosphere here tonight. It may be a little hot and humid up in this room, but it's all worth it. They're feeling it. Finally, the Stags are able to to give El Salam, Purston, Friedman, and Hancock, excuse me, Hancock still in there. And El Salam still in there, never mind. But they gave Purston a rest. Two unforced errors by the Dogfish have led to that. And they were early on in the points, too, is the second or third throw of near, near, the, do- near the Stags' end zone. You wonder if the Dogfish have been in this situation before. I don't believe they have. Had they had to come back with the raucous crowd here? They haven't been away, playing away in this situation. Now Anderson with it. Dumps to Abram. Abram marked by Lori. Abram crossfield to Kim, to Yo. Kawaoka. Riley Miner shagging an incredible D. Comes flying through the air and snatches away. Now, Chris Hancock. It's only 16 seconds remain in this game. Chris Hancock trying to figure out how far to go. Now, Hancock with it. Minor shagging. And Cody Bjorklund hammers over the top to Dan Shaw, and they take the lead. They're up to with eight seconds to go in the game. I don't exactly know if there's enough time for a comeback to even be physically possible. Players are going to need to run down 80 yards. I think it's safe to in, say it's in, over. In about three seconds, I think it's safe I to say it's over. I think it's safe over. to say it's over. Congratulations, Portland. It's what awesome a, for them to come out here. They dropped their first four games. Just kind of looking defeated there in the 
fourth quarter when they were down two. And actually at the end of the third quarter, that was a huge point when the Dogfish were just outside the end zone. They didn't put it in. They didn't, they didn't put, put it, it in. in. They had 30 the seconds quarter. to throw to the end zone. They didn't even take a shot at the end zone. They kind of dilly-dallied back. Ended up resulting in a no conversion. And the crowd's going to count it down. 500 discs. The players still want to play. And Jordan Jeffries comes down with it. It's not going to matter, however. And the Portland Stags break the, un the streak of the Dogfish. A four-game streak win their first four games. Stags are able to get the first win in the history of their short Major League Ultimate career as a franchise. Big moment. I'd like to thank our sponsors real quick. We got Elemental Technologies, Five Ultimate Friction Gloves, Innova, the MLU, for putting this on, Ulti Photos, and Waveborn. What a great game. Also, I'd like to thank our staff here. There's a lot more people than I'm used to working with, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to name them all, but big kudos to our camera, production crew. Stephen Marshall, Stephen Marshall, Adam Bilbino, Adam. Ian Lunger, Kimber Coles, of course, holding it down with the instant replay machine. Vin Bowie directing, and thanks to Aubrey Bishop working the And Kevin, game clock. a big thanks for hopping in on the microphone. It's a great game to call with you. For Major League Ultimate, he's Kevin Minderhout. I'm Jackson Kelsey. We'll see you later, sports fans.